I'm going to talk about local search. Local search problems are problems that uh, arrive at a solution that needs to be maximized. Okay. Uh, they try to arrive at that solution and the path by which we got to that solution is not important as opposed to for example a problem where you need to find the best route from point A to point B and you use some algorithm to get that and that algorithm actually explores a lot of routes and it gives you a whole set of path uh, a whole path of what was the best way to get from point A to point B in optimization problems you might just need for example to schedule something right to to schedule a bunch of people and it doesn't matter how did you arrive to that schedule what matters is the final project project product the schedule okay and that's the kind of problem we're looking for uh, optimization problems are also uh, also belong in the kind of problems that can be solved with local search um, in that for example well the optimum way of distributing uh, sensors in in a network or the optimum way of distributing uh, robots in some field etc etc and then there's also a uh, toy problem problem called the eight queens which I'm going to use throughout this video which says basically well how can I put eight queens on a board such that they're not attacking each other so for example uh, here, there, there's one queen attacking another one, right? There's one queen attacking that. How can I put these eight queens in this board without having one, uh, without having any queens attack each other? That's the eight queens problem. Um, usually, when you work in this uh, optimization problems, okay, by finding the best solution or the best state, you have an objective function, so some way of knowing whether one state is doing better than another state, okay? And we'll talk about those. So, for example, if I have to guess a number between 1 and 2,000, right, and you initially guess 1, and then I tell you, well, you're close, closer, closer, farther away, closer, farther away, I'm giving you a sign of how close or how far away your guess is from my guess, and I can even give you um, uh, guesses like very close, very, very close, very far, very, very far, right, and those would be, to some extent, an objective function because they tell you whether one number that you guess or one state is better than another. So the good thing about local search is that instead of tracking a path, they usually track. They usually just evaluate a series of um, of of, um, of choices, right? But they use little memory. They don't keep track of all possible paths nor anything like that. Just a small set of uh, potential solutions. Therefore, they use little memory and they're very fast, right? Um, or they can be very fast. And the other thing is that because they have an objective function which can be continuous, they also find reasonable solutions for continuous functions, for continuous problems, continuous paces. So for example, uh, some medical records problem or optimizing uh, dosages of something, optimizing a robot's path to traveling, uh, optimizing, like I said, you know, uh, the placement of of sensors in in an area where the space is continuous. It's not um, a discrete space where you can place where you can only place sensors in one point or another, but you can place them anywhere, right? So that's a continuous space problem. So what do these objective functions and states look like? Well, they're objective functions. Objective functions are are a number generated based on whatever state uh, you're in, whatever attempted a solution you have, right? So, for example, cost, right? Or 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 um, or or an optimization, maximum benefits, right? So, the benefits, no matter what the characteristics of the problem are, you can measure it. Say, for example, in money, right? And that's a one number. So, given a lot of states, all these are states, for example, one can plot the benefits, right, or the objective function of each of those states, and it might turn into something like this, right? So this is what a, a, a state space landscape looks like. Now in this state landscapes, there's a location, which is the states, okay, which are the states. Uh, there's an elevation, which is the objective function, right, and there's, for example, there are some peaks and valleys, right, and valleys here, right, 
and the highest peak is called the global maximum. You want your objective function to give you the most benefit, right, the maximum. Now, if you're minimizing cost, for example, you want your objective function to give you the absolute minimum that you can possibly um, get. Now, you always start from some initial state, and we're going to look at algorithms, uh, and they all start from some initial random state, okay? And then from that state, they move towards, hopefully, a maximum, or in the case of cost problems, a minimum, okay? So, let's look at the first algorithm here, which is called hill climbing. Hill climbing is an algorithm that say, for example, if this is the shape of a function, all right, if this is the shape of a function, and this is your initial state, what hill climbing does is the following. It will, it will look at all the successors of the state, so for example, say this one, this one, Okay, can, there can be many, many successors, but look at, at all of the successors of the state. So basically, what states can I go from this guy? Okay, what is the next state? And all possible successors, and it will look at the highest value one, right here. It will look at the highest value successor, and it will call it the neighbor. Okay, if this highest value successor, if the value is greater than the current state, right? If the value is greater, then update that neighbor becomes the current. So, you know, let's do this one be the current state. That's what it does. And from here, it picks successors again. Say it picks a successor here and a successor over here. Okay, these are state, there are successors. It'll look at the highest value successor of these, which is this one right, highest value successor, it will see that it's called neighbor. It'll see that neighbor is has a greater value than the current state, which is here, so then it updates the current state. Then again, it'll pick the successors of this, over here, over here, and over here, for example. It will pick the highest value of those, which is this where the mouse arrow is pointing, and it will see that, and it will call it neighbor. It will see that this neighbor the value is less than the current that the current uh, solution explorer. That means that I've reached a peak and everything else is below me. So basically, I've found the optimal solution and then it returns that state. It returns the current state as the solution. This is hill climbing and in particular um, greedy hill climbing because it's trying to pick the best possible solution at every given uh, step. Let's look at it from the eight queens problem, right? Looking at the eight queens problem. If I have a heuristic, which is going to be the number of queens attacking each other directly or indirectly, I'm going to explain why indirectly in a second. That's going to be my heuristic. This is going to be my cost function. And now, because this problem has to do with no queens attacking each other, I'm going to try to find the minimum, okay? The minimum. So it's going to be, instead of hill climbing, it'll be like uh, descent, okay? Now, the successors of one board of, or one setup of queens are all possible states in which only one queen moves in one column, okay? So, basically, there, there, are, um, uh, there are seven positions for each column, right, for each queen, and there's eight queens. So, each, each uh, board will have 56 possible successor boards. In this case, a state is one of the uh, checker boards like this, and each state will have about 50, um, not about, will have exactly 56 other possible states. So for example, the successor of this state will be a board in which, for example, this queen moves to this position, right? That will be a successor of this board. Each board, again, has 56 successors. Now, just to have this uh, down, the heuristic of this board will be one because there's only one pair of queens attacking each other. Okay, so now let's look at let's say we've been running, uh, we're going to run uh, hill climbing, and our initial state looks like this. I'll explain these numbers in a second, but there's a queen here, 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 and here. Right? Let's look at let's count the number of uh, attacking uh, queens directly or indirectly in this board. We have one two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, those two, right? And now the indirectly. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. So there's seventeen queens attacking directly or indirectly in this board. Okay? That is the heuristic, seventeen, of this board. Now, why is it directly or indirectly? Why do we care about directly or indirectly? Well, because if if this queen, for example, is attacking this other one indirectly, it doesn't matter where I move this queen, I'm still not going to find the solution. Because if I move this queen out of the way, I still have two attacking pairs. So, so it's just an indication of how good your solution is going to be. All right, so I have my heuristic of 17. I've established this. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore for each of the other 56 states. I'm going to Assume that I move the queen, say for example, I move this queen to this space here. This is my attempt at drawing a chess queen here. Okay, so I move the queen to this space, and what would be the heuristic if I move this queen to that space and there's no queen here? Okay, well, my heuristic would be one, uh, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen somewhere else here. Um, oh, indirectly, fifteen there. Okay, so if I move my queen from here to here, the heuristic of the board would be fifteen. If I move it from here to here, the heuristic of the board would be 14, and so on and so forth. So basically what I do is I compute the heuristic, see this is 15. If I move my queen here, the heuristic is 15. So what I will do is for each position on the board, I will compute, I will assume a, as if I move the queen over here, I will compute that heuristic and note it somewhere. Move the queen, compute the heuristic. Move the queen, compute the heuristic, right? And I will do it for all of them. And then here, I will look at the best successor. So again, going back to the algorithm, right? I'm going to find my highest value successor. And my highest value successor is any of the 12s here. Okay, any of the 12s. Okay, so, so um, I will pick one of the 12s. And I will pick, actually, let's move this queen over to this 12. And we get this successor state. Now, it's for you to do the following. What is the heuristic of this board? And then the other thing is, well, what if the heuristic of a successor? What might happen here is that now the successors, any successor, the heuristic for any successor might be actually higher than my previous 12. This is something that happens, right? So what if the heuristic of this board is now 12? We know that because we move the queen over here. But then, and, and, uh, and what would be the, the successor of this, right? We also, this is several boards down the, down the road, so we also move this queen up here, and so on and so forth. So what would be the successor? If there are no successors that, are, that have a lower heuristic than the heuristic of the board, what do we do? Well, that has to do with actually getting into concepts called a global maximum, right? Or a local maximum. So in this case, in the case of this board, we've arrived at a board that is a local, in this, remember in the board we're trying to get the minimum value, zero, right? In this board, we've arrived at a local minimum. So say, for example, something around here, okay? And we can't get out of there. There's no heuristic that's going to allow us to climb out of there into the what actually would be the global minimum which is where we want to go so in the next video i'm going to explain some algorithms to actually get out of these uh of these states that are complicated to uh continue solving the problem